Hi, how's it going there? We're going to begin a new chapter now, and that chapter is about sequences and series. All right, so part of your algebra topic on your IB Math SL syllabus. All right, we're going to be talking about some very basic stuff with sequences in this video. You'll see a couple of goals that we're going to try to reach here, and the first goal is this. You're going to learn to describe the pattern in a number sequence and predict subsequent term values. All right, it's talking about patterns. And when we're talking about number sequences, patterns is what we're doing. In fact, that's kind of what this chapter is about, is analyzing patterns, using those for predictions, and, and a few other various things. But that's the main gist of this chapter. All right, the second goal is that you're going to use the formula for what's called the general term of a sequence in order to generate the sequence, or to find any term that I want you to find, whether it's the 11th term or the 99th term, so forth. All right, that'll make more sense in a little bit as we get to it. Let's move on and let's talk about sequences. And let's start that discussion about number sequences with simply answering the question about what is a number sequence. Now, you see a definition in front of you. A number sequence is an ordered list of numbers that are defined by a rule. And there are endless possibilities for the different rules that you can use to define a number sequence. And I'm going to show you a couple right here. And then we'll get on to some things that we need to talk about in terms of analyzing sequences um, after that. All right, so one example in this one is the most famous example of sequences that I can think of and probably that you can think of as well. And that, of course, is the Fibonacci sequence, the famous Fibonacci sequence. Now, there's a rule that you use to get the numbers in this sequence. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a sequence if there wasn't a rule. It's not just chaos going on there. And the rule, as you may be familiar with, is that in order to calculate what the value of a term is, what you do is you add the previous two terms together. Now, the sequence simply starts off with the number 1 followed by the number 1 again, and there's some logic behind that. Um, but then you see, I actually start the rule at the third term. To get 2, I add 1 plus 1. To get 3, I add 1 plus 2. To get to 5, I add 2 plus 3. You keep adding the two previous numbers. All right, so for instance, if I wanted then to use that rule that I add two terms to get the next term, I would then say the next term that is not given here would be 8 plus 13 or 21. And then 13 plus 21, 34. Kind of see how a sequence works there? Okay, good. Another sequence would be this. Check out the numbers 1, 3, 6, 10. Now, we could describe this sequence using rules of various types. I have a particular one in mind that's pretty cool, and you'll see that in a moment. But I imagine if you were sitting down to try to analyze this, this is what you would come up with. You know, the, Kind of the pattern as far as how you form one term based on the previous term is this. You notice that we add 2 to get the second term. Then we add 3 to get the third term. Add 4 to get the fourth term. Add 5 to get the fifth term then, so the fifth term would be 15 and so forth. So you're adding consecutive integers in order to create the terms in a sequence. Now, kind of a cooler way of looking at this is there's a geometric pattern that's going on right here. And you might not know this, but these numbers are what are called triangular numbers. And when you see a picture, you'll see why they're called triangular numbers. And it's simply because you can form triangles with these numbers of dots. And each of those triangles would have n number of dots per side. Now, I want to explain that idea, n number of dots per side, because that kind of encompasses something that you need to know about sequences in general. And the thing that I, want, that I said that I want to describe is what do I mean when I refer to n? Because every time we're working with sequences, we're going to use the variable n to mean a very specific thing. And that thing that we're going to let it represent is going to be a term number in a sequence. So whenever you see n in this chapter, it's always going to represent a term number. And what I was saying, these triangular numbers form triangles with sides that have n dots each. Well, here's what I mean. Um, you see, we've got the first four terms. So if I were to label the term number here, um, n would be 1 for the first term, n would be 2 for the second term, 3 for the third term, 4 for the fourth term, and so on. Now, the first time you can actually see a triangle is right here, and you see that there's two dots per side on the second term. 
there are three dots per side on the third term. There are four dots per side on the fourth term. Um, and it just happens to be that there's a total of 10 dots. So triangular numbers, kind of a cool thing. There are some examples of sequences. What else can we do with sequences? Well, we're keeping that pretty basic in this video. The next thing I want you to be able to do is describe the patterns in a number sequence. And that's the directions for the next pair of examples that we're going to do. is to write a description of the sequence and then find the next two terms in the sequence. And let's begin that with this sequence. All right, 32, 24, 16, 8. Now, whenever you're analyzing a sequence, all you're doing is looking for a pattern. And this happens to be one of those really easy patterns to spot. You've probably figured it out, out already. In order to create each term in this sequence, all we're doing is simply, all we're doing is simply subtracting 8 from each term. So 32 minus 8 is 24. 24 minus 8 is 16. 16 minus 8 is 8. There you go. So in describing the pattern, what we're going to do is say, Subtract 8 from each term. And then as far as what are the next two terms, well, clearly then we're going to have to do 8 minus 8, and that would be 0. And then 0 minus 8 would be negative 8. Super easy example, but you get the idea of what, a, what the patterns can be and how you would describe them. Now here's another term or another sequence that has a pattern that you can describe quite easily, although... I actually have a couple ways of describing these, uh, this sequence. So let's talk about what you're probably going to notice first, and then let's talk about what the other possibility is as well. What you're probably going to notice first about this sequence is that you can multiply each term by 5 to get the next term. So 5 times 5 is 25, right? 25 times 5 is 125. 125 times 625. Or sorry, 125 times 5 is 625. Well, so the term is we continually multiply by the same number over and over again. Now I just gave you a sequence in which we kept constantly subtracting. Here we kept constantly multiplying. Patterns where you keep, or sequences in which you continually multiply or you continually add or subtract are going to be the focus of this chapter. We're going to spend more time on those than anything else because there's lots of special things you can do with them. Okay, But they're not the only patterns. And in fact, I already told you that there are two different ways of describing this pattern, and here's the second way that we can use. Um, it turns out that each of these numbers is a power of 5, isn't it? This is 5 to the first power, 5 to the second power, 5 to the third power, 5 to the fourth power. Now, ah, there you go. So that's how I want to describe it, just because it's probably the one you less likely would have chosen. And easiest way maybe of saying that, or the most accurate way of talking about that, is that the terms are consecutive powers of 5, 5 to the first, 5 to the second, and so on. And in the next two terms then, well, we would have 5 to the fifth power, which is 3,125, and then 5 to the sixth power would be 5 times that, and that would be 16, or rather 15,625. That's describing number patterns. All right, a little bit more to discuss here. This video was called the general term of a number sequence. Let's talk about general terms. Now, to do that, of course, we've got to describe what a general term is. All right, what do I mean by general term? Well, let me actually give you another word that we use to refer to the general term a lot. A general term is often referred to as the nth term of a sequence, okay? And the nth term of a sequence could be any term in a sequence. Now, remember, n is always going to be used to refer to a term number. So if n was equal to 11, you would have, you'd be referring to the 11th term. The general term would be the 11th term, for instance. All right, the general term can be any term in a sequence. All right, what we're going to do in this example, we'll kind of show you what a general term is a little more clearly. Um, it says we're going to find a formula for the general term of the sequence. And then we're going to use that formula to find the 14th term. Now, I was trying to describe what a general term is. The reason we talk about a general term is because when you can find out a formula for the general term of a sequence, then you can figure out what any term in a sequence is without having to know all the previous ones. For instance, um, I could find a 99th term without having to know the previous 98 terms. And what a general what the general terms formula always does 
is it takes the term number that you're trying to find and you plug that term number into a formula and it gives you the value of that term. Term, excuse me. Now when you're trying to find a formula for the general term, one of the things that's very important is that you think about what is the term number for each of the terms that you're working with. Now I'm going to give you a couple of ultimately simple examples here. Um, we know in this sequence 1, 4, 9, 16 that this term number is 1, this term number is 2, this term number is 3, this term number is 4. If you've started analyzing the pattern, one thing you might say the pattern or used to describe the pattern is you're adding consecutive odd numbers, starting with 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. And then you add 5 to get the next term, add 7 to get the next term, add 9 to get the next term, and so on. But that pattern doesn't help us make a general term so, so well. What does is if you notice that these numbers are special kinds of numbers. Remember we looked at triangular numbers in the first slide where I gave you examples of sequences? Well, these are all square numbers, or perfect squares if you want to think of it that way. And in fact, isn't this 1 squared, this is 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared? So a formula I could use to find the value of any term in the sequence is I could simply take the term number and square it. Now how do I write that? You need to get used to this. Whenever we're um, trying to refer to the value of a term in a sequence, what we're going to do is we're going to refer to a value u sub n. Now, if we're referring to the first term, we would write u sub 1. If we were referring to the seventh term, we would write u sub 7. You'll get that idea here in a moment. But when we're, when we're referring to the general term or the nth term, we say u sub n equals. And the way we calculate the value of the nth term we said here is you square the term number. All right, so for instance, if I wanted to figure out what the 14th term is, what I'm going to do is square the number 14. And the way I write that is u sub 14, that means the 14th term, and that's going to equal 14 squared, which is 196. All right, makes sense so far? Very good. Let's continue our investigation of the general term of a sequence. Oh yeah, before we move on from this one, I almost forgot. I did call these square numbers. And you remember the picture I gave you for triangular numbers? Well, here's a picture for square numbers, all right? We can make squares that each side is the length of the term number. Does that make sense? All right, so like the fifth term, a square that is five dots along each side, and there's a total of 25 dots that make that. Kind of a cool thing. Okay, well, the last thing that I'm gonna ask you to do in this video is to take a sequence that is defined by the formula for a general term and to find specific terms within that sequence. Here what we're going to do is we're going to generate the first five terms of the sequence that's defined by this formula that you see. And here's how we're going to do that. To find each term, all we're going to do is simply plug in the term number. All right, now make sure you label these correctly when you're referring to the first term. Write u sub 1. And u sub 1 would equal 1 plus 5 over 1, which is 6. U sub 2 would equal 2 plus 5 over 2. You notice everywhere there's an n, I'm replacing it with the term number. Now that would be 7 over 2, so I'll just leave that actually as 7 over 2. We'll write it as a fraction. And here are the next three term numbers as well. Term values, excuse me. All right, so the third term, 3 plus 5 over 3 is 8 thirds. Then you see the fourth term is 9 fourths. The fifth term is 10 fifths, if you want to kind of follow the one pattern I think you might see there. But of course, 10 over 5 is equal to 2. So the first five terms of the sequence, it might be easier to list it this way as an ordered set list of numbers. All right, so that's how you use the general term. Let's do one more example with that, and we'll be done with this video. And for that example, we're not going to make the first five terms, but what I want you to do is instead evaluate the fifth, twelfth, and twentieth terms of the sequence that's given by a certain formula. And again, if we want to find the fifth term, all we've got to do is plug in the number five into the formula. So let's label our work, and let's go ahead and see what we get here. U sub 5. would simply equal 5 minus 3 times 5 minus 5. 
Now that would be 2 times 0 or 0. So that's the fifth term in the sequence. The twelfth term, well, you know you're going to plug in 12 for n. Do that here, do that here, and do that here. So we'll get 12 minus 3, which is 9, times 12 minus 5, which is 7. So that term will be 63. And then the 20th term, we would have 20 minus 3, which is 17, times 20 minus 5, which is 15. And that would be 255. Okay, so after watching this video, you ought to know what a sequence is, and you ought to know how to describe a sequence and find missing terms in a sequence. You also ought to know what, the, what I mean when I refer to the general term of a sequence, and you ought to be able to use the formula for the general term in order to generate a sequence or to generate specific terms or evaluate specific terms within a sequence. Really appreciate you watching. Hope this has helped. See you later.